It is an interesting fact that the C sharp major prelude was originally constructed to be the C major prelude, so the opening of the book too. Uh, we can speculate on the reason why, why Bach decided otherwise and therefore had to transpose it to semitone up to make it his C sharp major. I think that he probably thought it would be too similar to the very famous prelude from book one, C major. It is the only prelude in the second book which remains constructed upon a pattern that is repeated through the entire piece, although not quite the entire piece. Just listen to the beginning. So you can see that, yes, it, if you transpose it just turn down, It's the same musical world. So it was probably good not to use it as an opening, especially as the opening of book one is so incredibly well anchored in the popular consciousness, uh, which was certainly not the true at the time of Bach, but is now. This prelude is a lot less well known. And yet, despite all the self-imposed limitation on the writing, you can see that Bach is actually exploring a more complex world. Though the right hand is almost as simple as the of the of the first book, the left hand meanders and almost forms a melody. has found a way to slightly enliven the, the material where in the first book he had remained deliberately simple about it. Um, but there is another feature which distinguishes this prelude is that it is in two parts and that gentle atmosphere of the beginning two thirds of the way of the, in the piece gives way to something different. So, uh, so here we have a little afterthought. Um, and again, that wasn't the case um, in the first book. And that's something which is relatively new in the second book. The, the construction is on the whole more sophisticated. Because it is written in C sharp major, again, I don't feel I can simply play it like. The key avoids something more delicate. And I certainly put the soft pedal and I try to create a, a diaphane atmosphere. saying that Bach ever heard this and uh, he didn't have this way of changing the, the tone color on his harpsichord but I think it works well I'm not the first one to do it if you listen to Fischer Edwin Fischer he creates an absolutely magical atmosphere it feels that the piano doesn't have hammers that it's just brushing the strings uh, and I cannot deny that this influenced my conception. The fugue, I think, would earn the prize of the most amusing, almost downright funny of the 48. The 
motifs seem to erupt uh, randomly, a bit like mushrooms coming in all, from all directions. Uh, you seem never to know what is going to come next. It comes with incredible rapidity. The subject is... But what is pretty unique in that figure is that the subject doesn't even have time to be enunciated once in its entirety before the second answer comes up. And then the third voice comes and comes in a mirror. So, so everything is absolutely jam-packed and it is full of little... Uh, Bach had an absolutely wonderful stroke of inspiration and we know it by looking at the earlier draft. Originally, a line that I'm going to play, you would have run like this. Then he added just a little note here and there to make it... And that absolutely transforms the fugue. And in fact, those little notes start to come more and more and more and pile up until you get to a point where you get... So that those little notes become a stream and totally engulf the music. Uh, so it's a fugue that I like particularly, and I hope you will too.